Yeah, how's it going, guys? And welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Um, over the last the fourth, we were with Hanako in her room. Was it still after the birthday party? I can't remember. <laughs> but it seems like he's still drunk, so I think it is. Hanako hiccups again, looking at a right mess as she stands and looks downcast in the center of the room. Her personality changed as she drank more and more, and now, all alone in her room with me, her previous brightness seems to have left her. Was she just acting up beat to make sure we didn't worry? Even if she was, what could I possibly do for her? Since I... Since I do exactly... <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> since I do the exact same thing in my regards of my own condition. Distancing myself from my thoughts, I eventually managed to crawl Hanako towards her bed, though her attempts to tame the wild sheets on it end up accomplishing little. <laughs> oh, better read this later. <laughs> I'm, wrong, I'm recording! Sorry about tonight, Hanako. I know you probably won't remember any of this, but happy birthday. I'm sorry I couldn't do more for you. She looks up at me for a moment. I have no idea what I... No idea if what I said actually got through to her, but any chance to ask is lost as her eyes peacefully close. I sigh in relief before quietly backing away from her and leaving the room, flicking the light switch off as I go. I hesitate a little before opening the door to Lily's room again, quickly rehearsing what I should say if I get questioned about Hanako. After a few seconds, I still can't come up with anything. I open the door to make sure that to close it behind me, lest my passing students catch a glimpse of the wine before turning my attention to the two girls at the low table. Akira is casually smiling, as is Lily. I welcome the change from the mood in Hanako's room. Is that you, Hisao? Yeah, I got Hanako to her, to her bed. She's sleeping now. That's good. I have to admit I hadn't thought that she'd drink quite so much. Hey, it's fine. She's all safe and tucked up in bed now. But the way she is, she awkwardly trails off, though, though Lily and I would hardly protest. For someone so anxious and fearful, drinking would give an easy out for those constant feelings. I wish I could do more for her. I feel useless. Looking at Lily, I think back to what I asked myself in town. My relationship with her is that of a friend, and has only ever felt that way. But now I think I don't know why. Lily's been there for both Hanako and me, since I first met her. But she's like that for everyone, trying to do her best to make them feel better. With that in mind, then... What's the bond between me and Hanako? After rescuing our relationship following the panic attack, I inadvertently triggered during class. I feel like we're back to being friends, but she's she's on my mind more and more. I can't. But uh, I hope Fraps is recording. Oh, yes, it is. I was fearing for that. I can't say I view any other girl in quite the same way, but maybe it's just normal reactions to someone acting like this. Say, Akira. She yawns before looking at me. It's getting, it is getting pretty late. You know about what happened with Hanako, don't you? Yeah, Lily told me. I negotiated pretty hard for a break so I could come down and help make her birthday party a bit brighter. We get pretty, we get along pretty well. <laughs> it's surprising to hear that from someone as e extroverted as her. But if Hanako came to know her, Lily. Through Lily, maybe she had time to get used to Akira. And on that note, I'd better get going. I'm already going to be a bit late as it is. But it's already so late. Sorry, we got a bunch of work dropped on us. So over time it is. She leaves herself with a grunt, with a grunt, and heads past me, t past me towards the door. Just before she leaves, she turns back towards us. You haven't forgot about that time for the flight and all the rest. Don't worry, I have everything ready. It's just a matter of packing when it gets closer to the time to leave. Atta girl, I'll see you guys later then. And with that, she disappears through the door and her hand held high in farewell. Your sister is... something, alright? I probably should have thought that comment through before saying it. Regardless, she seems quite amused by my appraisal. You okay after all that drinking? Not wasted and not just hiding it well. I assure you, I am quite alright. I can moderate myself. You seem quite self-possessed as well, if I do say so myself. Yeah, well, I guess your moderation applies to me as well. With a little hesitation, I take a seat at the table in front of Lily. I want to address this directly, if, if for no reason, for no other reason than to settle my own thoughts. I've been meaning to ask this. 
but it took me a while to make up my mind. Do you have any idea about what triggered that panic attack? I gather that it was something to do with her birthday, but I don't know anything anymore. Even Akira was being really careful around her, so I assume she knows as well. Lily smiles drops. <laughs> the guy the guy of the birthday party now well and truly over. To be honest, I'm not sure of all of the details myself. Hanako told you that she was in a house fire. She told me as much. After we met and spent a lot of time together. Other than that, she quite simply never told me. She never told you. Assuming the worst, what does she have to look back upon? A life of, a life of isolation and possibly even the death of her family? Maybe even going as far as blaming her existence for the death. Even thinking about what little I know about Hanako's past is bleak. To have lived through all that and to live with, on with those memories must be infinitely worse. Lily looks similarly depressed, but I can see her rebuild at least some of her composure before my eyes. I get the feeling that both of us are talking more frankly than we might otherwise do thanks to the wine, but it feels like we just talking this out is a good thing anyway. I kind of feel of helpless about it. When, I, when it's put like that, what can I possibly do for her? I'm not wholly sure I should tell you this, but Anuka told me that you visited her uh, the day after we both went to check on her. I must admit that I did not predict that she would take such a, such a step so quickly after what happened, nor did I expect you to. I think it was a nice gesture on your part. It wasn't much, really. It's just, at times like this, I sometimes think it would be better if we had never had to leave Yamaku, or at least this town. It's like so much easier without others around. I didn't expect Lily to look quite so troubled for what, to, at what I say, and for a while she looks lost in thought. She moves to speak, but stops herself as soon as she does, and then she thinks, this is a bit off, it's a bit off-putting. I think... Tell me, do you have anything planned for Friday evening? Fr Friday evening? No? Isn't your flight to Scotland the next day? I don't think it would be a good idea to tire yourself out before you even get there. It'll be alright, you didn't worry about me. i do this tomorrow evening, but I imagine Hanukkah would be feeling rather off for a while. The thought of the chief's going to be tomorrow makes me grimace. <laughs> How she's going to be tomorrow? Maybe we should count our blessing that she didn't end up simply throwing up from drinking so much, while having such a low tolerance. Well, I'm going to be able to attend whatever you're planning. What is it? Nothing unusual, I assure you. Just a little, a little excursion. Excursion. And you'd better be off, Isao. I can't imagine it's long. And all until curfew's here. Oh damn, curfew! I completely got forgotten. I look at the clock next to Lily's bed. What it seems to be... Some oddity without written numerals, which I suppose makes sense given Lily's condition. Not wanting to risk a hardy security patrol giving me a scolding, I get out and decide to go to my dorm as she says. Well then, I guess I'll see you and Hanukkah tomorrow, assuming that both of you manage to get up in the morning. Thank you for your concern, Isao. Until then. With that, I make, off my, I make my way out of the, her door and into the hallway. I hope her idea will be a good one. I catch. The hammering of the fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded into my head. Once, twice, three times, I let out a long annoying breath and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whatever it is just to go away. I feel pretty damn awful. My fear feels like it's cast out of my head. My arms feel heavier and my and I feel pretty queasy. It's been like this since I woke up a half an hour ago. I can't summon the energy to pick myself up out of the bed. So this is what they call a hangover. I never experienced that. I never experienced a hangover before. I wonder if perhaps this is the best treatment for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult, considering how unpleasant this is. It's not something I want to repeat. A series of thumbs rings out again. Rever reverberating around the small room. I wish to just give up already. I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Second pass, turning to minutes. Since no more knocks are coming from the door, whoever it was must have left. Thank goodness. Look at my clock, the time... Probably Kenji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
or someone else. Look at my clock, the time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for class is approaching. I don't think I can manage it though. I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without needing to look at the mirror to confirm it too. The morning rush is giving me enough t t time to stand outside the classroom for a little while without looking too suspicious. I hope that Muto doesn't ask any awkward question about my not attending school yesterday. I was sick, that much is true. It's just the reason for it that I have to hide. Confident I get my I get by with the tactical omission of certain truth. I stride into the classroom without doing my best The classroom doing my best to appear normal. The instant I open the door, I take a single step in. I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There is no way I'm imagining this. They're not even making an attempt to hide it. My eyes take a quick sweep around the classroom, and I spot Hanuko. I make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. Did she spill the beans? Muto may be okay as far as the teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something that would be taken lightly. I look at him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thank you. He motioned me to take my seats. My seat. <laughs> My legs feeling like sticks as they carry, their, carry me there. This is going to be a long day. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask what's wrong, what's going on. Hanako, did you tell? She looks up at me and shakes her head. <laughs> That's a big relief. It's just... just... Why hello there, Chan! It's nice to see you again today! Do -do 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 -do. I grimace and turn towards the unmistakable voice coming from behind. That was way too upbeat a tone of voice to feel comfortable, even from Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. She isn't this though. It's a very bad sign. The one she wears has become nudged into my brain as her I had got you seven ways from Sunday smile. I got I have got you seven ways from Sunday? Hi, she is in the Misha. You uh you look happy to see me. Not feeling well yesterday, Hichan. No? No, I wasn't. But, I was, but I'm feeling better now, at least. That's a that's good to know, Hichan. Why do I get the feeling that Shizun is leading me into a trap? You sound like you're not being completely serious. Oh no, Hichan. We're generally pleased that you're all better now. <laughs> Shizun is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh no. In fact, we were quite worried about you after all. You, Hanako, and Lily were all absent from class on the same day. Yep, she's got us. So thoroughly that all I can do is sigh in defeat. I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just kinda not tell anyone? It's a bit late for that, Hichan. I suppose she's right, considering the looks I got as I entered class. Still, only seem to be the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations, so we'll probably be fine. Hanako's face sinks a little further. Such attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone for her. Going by Shizuna's Misa's reaction, I think they noticed this as well. This as well. The only reason we're giving you so such a hard time is that you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? All oh, all the banging! It takes a while to recollect what happened then, given the haze induced by the generally awful state I was in at the time. Alright! The knocking! That was you two? It was, and you left us there for ages! After we'd taken all the effort of coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry, I was having a... Problem in nausea? A problem in nausea! They're not buying it. I can't blame him. She's in his head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little, and she pulls it out. It turns to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. Oh, a letter. Since she points it towards you, I duly take it. This is what we are trying so hard to give you, Hee-chan. You don't check your- I tune out the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes register what's written on the envelope. Yonako. Oh, the letter part of the story. I stare at the envelope for a moment, before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. There are some very strange, somewhat invasive feeling about their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwanako? It's nothing. Thank you for bringing, this, for bringing me this, you two. 
I should think so, after what we went through to get it to you. To get it to you. I step back to say my goodbyes. Misha th theater theater theatrically <laughs> parts, even if I go out the door, but she's and Hanukkah remain very visibly curious about my reaction. I hope they won't interrogate me on this later. The smell of the gardens is, as always, a very pleasant sensation. Some of the most visible signs of how well founded how well funded this school is, aside from its sheer size, are, uh, are the expanse and condition of the grounds. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chatting and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying the summer here, keeping watch over the students and walking along the long concrete path. I've never seen a site like this in my home city. Our excursions, maybe, but certainly never in the school or anywhere near where I lived. Even the bench I sit on to read is warmer, thanks to the summertime sun, reminding me of why I hadn't worn the school blazer even once yet. Ah, it's the letter time from Iwanako. Considering this, the sunflower and splashes of red and yellow coloring adorning the paper are quite appropriate for the time. If only the words written on it were as well. Here I was, thinking I managed to get over her. Then this trouble thing, troublesome thing shows up. Her, hand, her handwriting looks vaguely familiar at best, and only now that I see it again, I remember that she used to write a pink, in pink pen a lot. She was always very girly, for lack of a better term. But she was also quite fragile. I never knew if I liked this aspect of her or not, though with, an, with the arrival of this letter, that question seems to have become largely moot. The letter begins to no with not much more than an update on the state of things going on in her life. My old class had been the start of the school year. Many, of the, bleh, many are anxious about the exams that will be coming up in the future, etc. But in the end, on a, on a very personal, in brief note, it feels like she wrote most of the letter just to try to soften the blow from the end. I wanted to express I want to somehow express my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered the most. Even though I like you so much, at least now, finally, I can be more honest. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had just said something. I hope you've managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, it also feels more final. Somehow I wonder if we will meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't? Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Iwanako. And so, that's that. Our relationship is over. Nice, neat, and tidy with no amb ambiguity. <laughs> I hadn't held on to any illusion that we could ever begin anew. The last time she visited me, neither of us said a thing, except for the one word she said when she left for the last time. Goodbye. Be that as it may, this feels more final, the capstone of an experiment that both of us tried and failed at. A loud shout draws my eyes away from the letter. It just shows some student horsing around, with one of the teachers standing nearby coming over to talk to them. Are you okay? A tentative voice comes from my side. For a moment I assumed to be Hanukkah, but it's actually Yuko. Oh, hello Yuko. I thought you'd be in the library. She gives a cheerful smile, one quite fitting the atmosphere, and flourishes the empty wrapper of a roll in her hand. She must have had something else covering for her while she grabbed something to eat. It reminds me that I haven't had anything to eat yet. I don't feel hungry though, and skipping one lunch won't hurt. Mind if I sit here? Go ahead! Blah! Go ahead. <laughs> I quickly slide the letter back into its envelope, slipping it inside my bag, prop, propped against the side of the bench. As Yuko takes a rest, a seat, she drops the rabbit into the bin beside us. Without much else to do, I lean back and take what enjoyment I can from the sun, silently reflecting on the letter. The lush lawns, the clear blue skies, everything looks so different from the way it did back then. Even the school's surroundings, from the hills it is on the woods around it, and are completely opposite to the urban scenery I remember. Maybe this is what it feels like to feel homesick. Maybe it's like to feel homesick. Then again, it's not an outright bad sensation. The 
feel of the area around Yamu Yamaku, while very different, is also nice. I think I could get used to it. Hey, Hisao? Yeah? You don't. You didn't answer my question from before. I wasn't going to say anything, but you still look troubled. If you don't want to say anything, though, it, that's okay. I don't mind at all. I'm so sorry for asking something strange like that. I don't mind. It's just, I got a letter from someone I knew before I came to Yamaku. It made me think about some things. I thought I'd managed to get over most of the problems that my accident caused, but now I'm not really so sure. I kind of wish I'd never seen it. I don't think that's good, Hisao. <laughs> when my boyfriend left me, he did so very suddenly and never let me know why. At the first, I was very depressed about it, but I decided to forgive him. You forgave him? Couldn't he at least have talked properly with you about it? He was always one of those people that found it difficult to come close to others. In the end, I decided that I fell in love... You <laughs> fell in love with him for a reason. He was a good person, and I think if I had been in this position, I would probably have found it just as hard to try and talk to him. I don't really see the connection to the letter I got. I mean that, um, how should I put this? It must have been very hard for the person to send that letter, and if they did, I think they must have thought very hard about exactly what to say. Even like I managed to write this letter and bring her final close to our relationship, something that I'd never managed to do. Whereas here I am, trying to protect and help Hanukkah as best I can. Especially with Lily leaving for a while and I'm not even able to deal with my own problems. Does that make sense? She's taken my non-response and furred broad as doubt. She really reads faces too much, just like a certain other person. Yeah, that makes sense. A letter I was just kind of a shock, really. I think I tried to fool myself into thinking that my life reset when I came into Yamaku. But now I'm suddenly aware that it didn't. I'm a bit of a loss about how to deal with these feelings. I think that's something I really, I can't really help with you. Sorry. It's fine. I think being able to talk with you helped me get things sorted out a bit better in my head, so thank you anyway. She nods and smiles sweetly. Yuka's a nice girl, so it's a shame she's highly strung so often. The school bell rings. The school bell ringing and there's... Oh, startles our boat. Ah, I'm supposed to be back before the bell! Oops. She jumps off the bench and almost strikes us off without a second word, but turns on her heels to, as she remembers she was talking to me just now. I'll see you later, Hisao. Cheer up, okay? I'll try. Thanks, Yuka. <laughs> With a quick bow, 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 Yuko takes her leave and begins her rush to the library. Her flight catches the curious eyes of a few passing students, who are unenthusiastically trudging back to their classes after their fun. Reluctantly, standing from, bench, from the bench, I dust myself off and join them. Even while I walk through the gardens back in the main building, the thought of the letter in my bag doesn't stray far from my mind. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's night time. This is where I end this part. Reach it out. What? Oh. No, oh, okay, whatever. I'm gonna leave you guys. This is the end for this part. Hope you look forward to the next part. I'm gonna leave you guys with Havak. Okay, let's see what happens. No more jumps! Huh? What? No! You kidding me? Ah! Ah! You're all fake!